Instruments with uh, not a lot of range, but yet still able to make a uh, duet sound. Um, still able to accompany each other in a real full way. You know, and uh, we've both kind of evolved some interesting ways to do that. So, uh, um, yeah, what, what were we doing? We were playing uh, at Fiddle Tune, we were playing. Whiskey before Whiskey breakfast. Whiskey before breakfast, right, yeah. <laughs> almost. What was that tune? We got very, um, a little bit abstract toward the end, but you could still hear the chord changes going on, and there was definitely kind of a trading back and forth of the lead, the melody. Uh, at the beginning, you were playing the melody mostly, and uh, we followed the, a very classic pattern of development where it was pretty spare. We didn't play a lot at the beginning and got busier and busier, backed off a little bit and then came on strong, very busy at the end. So yeah, uh, violin is not necessarily an instrument that's known for backup as such, uh, but it does a great job. You In your hands. Well, <laughs> some hands, yes. You know, I spent a lot of time playing last chair, second violin in the school orchestra, so I kind of learned about <laughs> inner lines, backup lines, so that kind of helps. I'd say you elevated a little bit. Well, hopefully, hopefully from, from last year, second violin in the school orchestra, and it's a little bit farther along. But um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do orchestrally with just these two instruments if you're willing to go to a very small place, if, you're, if you're willing to play less at first, you know, less 
seems like more. If, we, if we're always playing a lot, then you can never get it to be big, and it can never seem to be big, but if you play very little sometimes, then you can certainly, um, when you do kind of come on strong with the notes, you can do that. Um, some of the things I was doing uh, at the very beginning I was just playing some long notes. I was trying to sort of minimize the chord changes. I was playing some really long kind of notes and long lines, like a parallel melody that sort of went under the, uh, the regular melody of Whiskey Before Breakfast. And then uh, just uh, tried to extend that. Um, one of the things that you want to do when you're playing backup uh, is not to change the uh, style or the spirit of what you're doing until you hit a new section. So I, whatever I was doing, I tried to maintain the feeling of that uh, until the next section. It was like an A, and then the repeat of the A, and then when the B came, I would do something different. So that's a good point. Yeah. That's really important to make it sound orchestral, so that it doesn't sound like you're jumping here to there randomly without much uh, sense. Yeah, and you know, just the way most tunes are structured, they're good tunes. It, it kind of it's like an automatic. It's kind of like helps you to um, kind of do that. You know, there's kind of this automatic structure. And it builds things. the drama of the, the bigger picture of the piece. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of avoided going into any rhythm until my second time through. We did a classic thing where uh, Mike would play basically the, the melody, the lead, and I would accompany him through an entire part. A, A, and B, B. Yeah. And then I would go in and play a lead that would be, you know, reminiscent of the melody, and Mike would play. It would be my job to play backup for yeah. the entire form. And this is something that we're improvising as we're doing this. That's probably the beauty of a duo, is that you can improvise these arrangements on the fly. Whereas if you have a five-piece band, and you're, you, it's harder to just make a decision. You have to make a decision, okay, on the second B, we're all going to play stops on the downbeat chord changes. Yeah. But with a, the, if with only one person playing backup, he can kind of orchestrate as he goes. Yeah, it's really true. You know, you don't have to worry about clashing into somebody else. Uh, the only other person you have to worry about uh, is the other person, and uh, it's a lot easier to hear really quickly what uh, the other person is doing if you're only listening to one other person besides yourself. <laughs> you should probably be listening to yourself a little bit. But... Uh, yeah, so that, uh, let's see, so by the time I hit the second time that I went into backup, which was actually the third round of the tune, uh, I was definitely thinking, well, maybe it's time to do a little bit of rhythmic stuff. I remember going into a little bit of shuffly business. You know, so it's like... <laughs> It's still pretty gentle. Yeah, it's still You're not chopping gentle. yet. And um, there's things in the tune that will suggest themselves too, like that little walk down uh, in Whiskey Before I Breakfast is so nice. Mm. That's just made for to jump up in there and just like bring out that little. Because the melody's a G know, note. Yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're playing, playing a harmony too. You can play a harmony, exactly. Something like that. And you can do it in either octave. Yeah, you can go up down. And the second time you can go. So there's a lot of things you can do to sort of accentuate, you know, parts of the tune that might, you know, be really nice to come out and just uh, you know disappear a little bit, you know. That feeling of um, even if you're doing something busy, if you keep it very much the same, if you keep it really kind of level and, and quiet, you can get away with like even a busier part because the human mind tends to just hear, okay, this is just going to be the same. It kind of tends to disappear. So there's kind of a nice quality there. If you can like just get something kind of busy, it can still sort of disappear and be in the background. Uh, and of course, yeah, 
And then we start thinking about, wow, okay, this, this thing. Now we've got this. This is, happens a lot. This is kind of a, a thing that maybe this is one of the things that the tune is about. And we can start putting that into a backup format. We can actually put it in places where it doesn't really happen in the tune. It's like, for instance, if you were to play. So we could be doing that. In so just long notes. Now you're playing counterpoint, essentially. Yeah, or, counterpoint based on an idea that's already happening in a tune. It's kind of cool. Right. Um, you're like a compositor. It's like a yeah. classical music trick, I believe. <laughs> it is. It's a, just a trick. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing things like that. And of course, then you, you could be doing it with the long notes. You could do it twice as slow. That would be kind of an interesting thing. You twi Two, lengthen three, out. Yeah. the note is moving, it, you can actually handle some dissonance. Yes. Because yeah. as long as your ear is pulling you some, to some place that is a consonant, then you, uh, you'll resolve it. Right. And if there's not two or three other guys playing uh, their ideas of what the chords are, you can really get a lot away with a lot. You know, if it's just right. you playing the melody, it's great. You can really do a lot. There was another thing you did where, you, you know, after we had built up all this energy and, and we had a lot of rhythm going, all of a sudden you just hit a high, like, A note or something and you just held it. Mm -hmm. And that just had a nice kind of release from all this chugga-chugga. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do. You know, you get to that point where it's just It's like throwing something in the air and uh, having it just... Uh, Unreal, you know, like I'm throwing a ribbon into the air and it's just having it unreal. Float out there. And just float to the ground slowly, which is a great image, you know. Um, you're always looking for things in other areas of art or um, photography, photography, poetry, um, nature, all kinds of things. Nature that, that can give you ideas for how to make the music work. You want to do, you want to do that example? I'll play like the last B, yeah. real strong, and yeah. then we'll go to the next A, and you show them what you mean with that. Yeah, cool. Note. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So the B, three. Back up, you can actually start a little bit. And then go through a completely different thing. So now we're kind of in half time. We're yeah. no longer gunka, gunka, gunka. Oh, we're now tunka, yeah. gunka. Yeah, and that's a wonderful, and it's a great way to interplay, you know, between this halftime feel, which is, a, uh, and the two beat. Um, it's really great for fiddle tunes and bluegrass in general because uh, it really gives you kind of a uh, a way to get out of the same feeling over and over again while still maintaining a good strong rhythm. <laughs> Excitement yeah. and, and then this kind of feeling of oh yeah okay now we're riding the horse you know the horse has been walking and sneaking around and all of a sudden we get out in the open and just like gallop along. takes off yeah very so, cool that's a great thing. Yeah. 